everyone. Thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary. Your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. Hi guys, welcome back to the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Ami J, your host. Thank you guys so much for listening, for watching, and I hope that you're liking, commenting, and subscribing. I always want to know what more you want to hear, who you want to hear from, and we're just going to get right into it. Today, I've got Dee Dee, my girl, <laughs> here with me, and I love Dee Dee so much. If you don't know who she is, you need to get to know who she is. Yeah. She is an influencer. I believe, you, did you start blogging? I started blogging, yeah. Well, okay. modeling first before blogging. Yeah. So she was a model, blogger, yeah. currently influencing to the max. And I mean, I go to her for advice. So she's definitely somebody to watch and to get to know. She's amazing, an amazing human being, just all around, just fun, electric. <laughs> and I'm just like, I need to have you on here because we've had so many awesome conversations in the past. And I'm like, you're someone that would definitely could share a lot of value with people listening. And I mean, we can just get right to it. Like, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> I mean, better. Amen. You know, it started a little bit interesting, but I think we're, we're all getting used to it. Feeling good. Yeah, good. yeah. I'm feeling good. I'm grateful. Thank Amen. you so much for having me. Yay. Took Thank forever, you. but I'm glad. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I mean, like, you're freaking busy. So yeah. I appreciate your time. I appreciate yeah. you being here. Seriously. Um, I know I was like busting your balls earlier because I'm like, hey, this diva, eh? <laughs> do you know how long it took? <laughs> hey, shh. But I love you, and I'm glad that we finally Thanks. made it happen. Um, you are, I mean, I want to get into, like, your story. Because yeah. I feel like um, if, if someone isn't privy to, like, who you are personally, yeah. like, I, I want to get to know that side of you. Who okay. are you? Where are you from? How did this all start yeah. for you? Um, your fellow Liberian Ghanaian woman in the industry killing it. Yeah. Where did it all start? Well, thank you again for having me. My name is Dita Howard. For you guys that don't know me, yes. um, I am, like you said, well, I just figured out that I, my mom is half Ghanaian. So yes. let's just add the Ghanaian part in there because it makes it it makes it interesting. I was like, mom is going to love this. That's so, my sister. <laughs> someone can relate to this. Um, I was born in Liberia and raised in Cote d'Ivoire for 12, 13 years. Wow. So you do speak uh, French. Je parle français, oui. Je oh, comprends. Oui, je... Elle parle français. Ah, oui. Elle parle français. <laughs> Moi, j'ai oublié tout. Vous avez bien comme ça. We're not going to speak French. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, but I lived in Ghana for five years. And then we moved from Ghana to the States. So I've been in America for about, let's say, 12 years. Mm, okay, okay, okay. So it's like a long story. I was yeah. I was looking at you like, is this girl ready for, for me to actually talk? No, seriously. That's that's how it is with me. Anytime someone asks, like, where are you from? I'm like, you got a minute? Because yeah, I'm like, yeah. well, it started here. And then I went there. And then yeah. I was raised here. And then I went here with my dad. It's it's a lot. Especially for people that are international. Like, yes. you, you're raised all over. Yes. And you, you, go, you travel all over. So yes. I get it. So I would say Liberian first, yeah. Ghanaian, and then the American aspect. Okay, yeah, because I'm like, which one do you feel most if someone was to say, like, where are you from? Um, it's, it's a I, I, question, say, right? I say Liberian. Liberian, Yeah, because okay. my mom is Liberian as right. well. My dad is fully Liberian. Liberian. So I, and if I was to say, um, like, anything else in front of my parents. Yeah, like, exactly, oh, exactly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So let's just stick with the Liberian part. That, I, that is so real though. Like the identity, like yeah, identity for me is a big deal because yeah. because it was a struggle for me discovering who I am, yeah. who I was. Now that I know who I am, I just like it's true to me. I yes. I stick with it. Yes. Um. But yeah, and then moved to the states like twelve years. Mm -hmm. 
I did college. How old were you I, then? I was, um, I think, 16. Okay. 16, 17. Yeah. I'm 31 now. Time yeah. flies. Yeah. So you know? it's almost like you're almost nearing spending more time in the U.S. than in Liberia. Yes. Wow. But the funny thing is, it's not all the time in the U.S. I traveled yeah. true, 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 before true, quarantine true. like of crazy. Course. Of course. So like quarantine now, straight one year in the u.s wow yeah we should I, I bet you hadn't done that in a long time mm, yeah in a i long don't time. think anybody had done no. that in a long time i actually stay in the US i actually love it year. i actually love it you know yeah. i used to think that i'm this sagittarius girl and i have to keep going going yeah, it's like yeah. i love my sages yeah, yeah. you're sag too i'm not a sag he's a sag my Ooh, boyfriend's a sag girl <laughs> <laughs> I love my Sag women and men. I mean, I don't They're very be, driven. Very... I don't want to be too into ourselves right now. <laughs> I, I, you know what? No, I'm. A, I'm. A, that's one sign. Okay. I'm like, okay. okay, or at least he's giving me a good, good impression. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you and my other Sag people. Yeah, but go on. No, no, Sag are very, very driven. Um, yeah. Happy people. If you meet the right one, yes. you know what I mean. Yes. So I did a little bit of high school here. And then I, funny thing is I discovered, I was discovered on a runway show in LA. And that's mm. when I moved to LA because mm. we lived in Indiana, yeah, North I was Carolina. Okay. Yeah, it's super cool. I don't know what's, what's the deal with African people. You come from such a hot weather yeah. and then you come into like this cold North Carolina and like Indiana. It's yeah. like super cold. Once I discovered Los Angeles, that was it. That was it. 19 years old, what? packed my bag in my old little car, drove on the highway for like, I think it was like a day or From a, Indiana? From Indiana all the way to LA. I, wow. didn't, I didn't know anybody here. I so, had um, roommates, uh -huh. I think, from Crackless. <laughs> wow. Wait, so when you first came to the US, your family was settled in North Carolina? Yes. And then you spent a little bit of time there, finished high school, and yes. then went to Indiana? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. and Indiana was college or? Um, Indiana was supposed to be college. Okay. And I did a little bit of community community college there, but um, and then when I discovered, like I discovered modeling just listening to the radio. Gotcha. And there was like I don't remember what is it called, pop something, mm -hmm. um, and you have to like pay or something, but they were offering me yeah. not to pay. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, like yeah, one yeah. of those things that like those I would expos? not do anymore. Yeah. Okay. So it's a bit scammy, mostly for kids or to expose your kids yeah, yeah, into yeah, the modeling yeah. war. Yeah. So I did it and I got I got all this like nice like rewards, like best runway. I was like in <sighs> wow. Yeah, it was fun at the time. And then I was like, well LA is for me. The weather's great. The people are so much more diverse than Indiana. Mm -hmm. Um, there's more conversation here. And you know, Sash, we're crazy. 19-year-old, my parents are telling me, you better not do that. Really? My mom was scared. My aunt was Like she was didn't want scared. you to move out here. Yeah, because I had no family. Wow. I didn't know anybody here. Because you just here. came for that one like expose thing. Mm -hmm. And then you were like, I think I'm going to stay. Uh -huh. No, no, no. I went back home and I said... I, oh, you're going back. I'm going back. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I did this whole thing where I raised a little bit of money, but not enough. Got myself some friends, some roommate on Craigslist, and I moved in. I moved to LA and I never been back. Wow. Yeah. No bit, way. Yeah. Craigslist, girl? You, I, were you crazy? I, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> I bet. Oh my God. How did you? I've heard so many horror stories. But of it was like, good. It was good back then. Yeah. Everything starts true, good. True, true. You know? You're right. Yeah. 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 Before it gets crazy. Before it gets crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. Thank God. It was good back then. Oh yeah. my God. So, how, so once you came to LA, like, mm -hmm. what was that? What was that like? I mean, it was it it was very very hard, and Not, it was different back it was then too. Different, yeah. I was nineteen year old African yeah. girl, very ten years ago, LA. It yes. was not easy. Yeah, very thick accent coming to do modeling. Totally stopped thinking about school because I always was like a school person, right. like a girl in a corner with the book. Of course. Um, and I got exposed to this like modeling world that I actually really loved. Yeah. But there was no there was no space for me in the modeling right. industry at that time. Right. It was very difficult. So I would do casting, and then I realized I need money to pay for rent. So I started working in retail. My first job was like Merrill's, mm. and then Zara. Mm. Then I made my way up the ladder as I got older. I started going to university. I went to UCLA. Okay. I started working in a hospital, awesome. and then I quit the hospital job, and really? I became an influencer. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wait, so while you're modeling, I'm just like, I'm yeah, just it's fascinated. Yeah, it's I'm fascinated. Lot. While you're like trying to support yourself modeling, because again, back then, there wasn't much space for black models. Yeah. 
Yeah. And we're going to get into that. Yeah. Because I obviously know about your amazing project. There, Yeah, there wasn't enough space for black models. Yeah, there wasn't. You're having to still support yourself. Yeah. And um, you get this job. And so you're in school and working at the same time. I'm doing three things at the same time. I'm in school, I'm wow. working, and I'm doing casting wow. for modeling jobs. Yeah. So I was like all over the place at 19, 20 years old. Insane. Difficult time of my life, right. but I still won't change anything. Of because, course, because it built you up. Yeah. So then during that time is when you, did you graduate? Um, you mean college? Yeah. I actually quit. Oh, you quit. Yeah. So what made you quit? Um, so it's so funny because I kept in college, I felt like, the only reason why I was going to college, not only because I loved like like um, science and a human body, because yeah. I was going to be a PA. Okay. First, I was a doctor and then a PA. African, you know, you gotta yeah. so you gotta. Uh, yes, we have to. We have to. Exactly. But then, I went into this like I went into this phase where I started pushing with school. Yeah. Because I felt like it would give me money. Okay. And security. Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. of course. And I started pushing to get into the highest and the biggest school, into the biggest hospital. So when I started, when I was in UCLA, I worked with the dean and I was doing like, I did a little bit of nursing all over, general, general uh, surgeon, Amazing. all that little crazy things. I realized that I was still pushing for the money mm. and that other things was making me happy. Mm. Like the modeling was still exactly. making me happy. What's actually fulfilling you? It was when fulfilling you're me. Yes. yes, I felt like a whole part of me was missing when I'm in school. I wasn't fully paying attention. Yeah. Don't get me wrong; I did have good grades. Um, yeah. That's the only way you can make it into med school. <laughs> Period. I, I did have good grades, but I wasn't but happy. I wasn't, mm, yeah, and mm. there a lot of people don't talk about this, but there is a lot of mental illness around medicine. Yes, and medical student because yes. it's not easy. No. It's really really hard, and you have to be really strong to be able to do things to study and push through it and not that I wasn't strong but it wasn't making me happy mm -hmm. so when I was with my partner mm -hmm. we're not together anymore mm -hmm. and he realized that even though I was in one of the top areas even though I was in one of the top school and I was studying working in a very good hospital have a good job I still wanted to model and I still wanted to help women right. discover who they are right so I wasn't happy. It wasn't fulfilling me. I realized that I was just doing it to make my family proud, to make friends proud, and to make money. So that's not a good thing to do no. if you want to build something for yourself. Right. So I, I quit. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It was, it was. I, I'm just like, yes, like especially in our culture, you know, with African parents, they don't, for a long time, obviously times have changed and thank God, mm -hmm. create anything in the creative world was seen as like a hobby. Yeah. It wasn't a real job or yes. something that could sustain you or bring stability yeah. in income. You and know? people look down on it. People's like, what a moral? Right. You just take pictures. Exactly. Well, you just pretty, you don't eat. Exactly. And they don't understand a lot of these things are people passion, yeah. but deeply rooted and it makes you happy. Exactly. Yeah. And even still, sometimes like you feel the need to like, even like I'm not just a model. At least for yeah. me, like that was my experience in some in some places where I felt like people were looking down on it. But I'm yeah. like, don't get it twisted. Yeah, and you had to justify yourself. You had to be like, I'm more than a model. Exactly. But you don't. You really have to say that. You don't. Have you don't owe to. anybody anything. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, but that's what the uh, you know the that's society how makes us make you feel. Yeah. Like no, I don't got, yeah. thank you for saying that. Like you do not have to justify anything. To anybody I now. am. I know me, and I know I'm everything. I'm more than anything that I do. Like, so what's wrong if you want to be a janitor? If it makes me? you happy. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's fine. Yeah. And guess what? These days, everyone is slash, slash, slash. I'm a this, that, that. Because yeah. we have so much access to information, so much access to opportunities yeah. to do it all and exactly. to be it all. So follow your heart, your dream. Listen. If it makes you happy. Period. Yeah. So then you finally quit and then you're just like, I'm going full force into this modeling world. At the time, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure like influencing um, was, was just kind of starting up. It wasn't actually. Really? No, no, it wasn't. It was like, like I think a couple of years before. Because um, I still consider myself a little bit new. Okay. Because um, I've been doing it for is it six years now. Yeah. Oh, you're wow. not new, ma'am. 
Oh my God. There are people that have been doing it for 12 years. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. It's like influencing or the world of influencing was, I mean, I feel like it wasn't, was it wasn't a 20. big thing at yeah. the time. It was still, it was still, it still had room to grow. Yeah. You know? Um, that whole thing is amazing. But I actually, I actually decided to be an influencer while I was like in school. Okay. Because the modeling wasn't working for me. Okay. Because I wasn't making enough money from the modeling as well. And also, Were you I wasn't getting sent to the right casting. Clients, okay. Or the clients. Okay. Because I was told that I can't sell, you know, as a black woman, that you cannot is sell. insane. Yes. So I would go to these agency and I see they have these rock star of the girls that right. all looks the same they all look but the then same. they put me in a box they said we already have a black girl that looks like you and this is where my my project came in because i felt like what is happening here what do you mean you already have a black girl but would you ever ever tell a white girl, girl we have enough already have brunettes we have yeah. enough blondes yeah we have enough redheads i have never been I've never heard that. Yeah. But for a black girl, we already have someone that has your look. No, you do not. Because yeah. I'm the only person that was born from that my looks mom like me. and father. Yeah. Okay? Exactly. Nobody looks like me. Oh, so, they'll put you in like a um, in like a little box. Well, you're not commercial enough. You're not runway enough. Um, you're not always you're not something dark enough. enough. So I always felt like I was the girl in between when it comes yes, to a black woman. Same. Like not super dark. And not super light skin with curly hair. Exactly. So then where do we fall in yeah, the with the girl, skin girls? Always the girl in the middle. For me, it was like very, very hard. It really does. It did play on my self-esteem a lot. I bet. I had to build that up over the years. I bet. Um, and that's why I decided to go into influencing, which right. they call content creator now. Right. Because it's yes. moving more towards that. Amen. Because I felt like I had a voice yes. on a platform. Yes. With, I mean, I didn't have a lot of followers. I think I had like... 20 or 50, but I could like mm. speak out to these women exactly. that connected, that felt the same way Amen. that um, I felt. So for me, it was like, I don't care how many followers I had at that time, yes. but someone that related to me that can hear my meshes was so much better than getting denied every single time Amen. you go into casting that you Amen. block, you know? Exactly. So that's when my, I, I did the Black Mirror project. That's, I, I was about to ask. I'm like, so what prompted you to finally do the project? Obviously, yeah. you started influencing more, but I felt like it was your almost like your big bang out the modeling industry. Like, yeah. drops mic. Like, <laughs> she's like, I'm dropping the mic on y'all, but before I go, bang. Bam. <laughs> So Talk I think I think it Black was it was one year after I started my blog because okay. back then blog was a lot blog was a big deal yeah. back then yeah. I was writing like um, sharing stories awesome. my my content right now is more about inspiring women to be the be the better self Amen. so it's not like I'm out there teaching people mm -hmm. because more so I consider myself as a learner. Mm -hmm. So I learn from my uh, my audience mm -hmm. and my audience learn from me. Mm -hmm. But I would share my stories with these women and men, surprisingly, because black men too is a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not only about black women. There are so many different women that related to it. I would yeah. share my story and my struggles doing modeling and everything, and my frustration. And these women would tell me they feel the exact same. Way, same. Yeah. Like, even with the husband, yeah. I had an Indian woman that got in contact with me and said she married, mm. but she was dark and she married into a lighter family that mm. treated her different. So I was like, damn, I have to do something about yeah. this. Like, I'm already depressed. Yeah. But then I feel like so many girls are more depressed than I was, you know? Mm -hmm. I took my partner at the time into, he was like, you should do it. Mm -hmm. Because he, he was... Um, Swiss, and he never really understood why I wasn't making it or why it was such a big Wait, deal. Think, yes. So I took him into the grocery so like, store. Look at you. Yes. How could you not be successful yeah. in this freaking industry? Exactly. But child, it's not as easy it's, as it. No. It's and when not. you when you say they say you're complaining, like oh my god, you have to step up your game. Like how much more do you want me to step up my game? I already know I have to work five times more than the other girl next to me. Period. Just for one opportunity. Exactly. So I told him to the grocery store. I'm like, if you find, if you can, if you can count the black women with your 10 finger in this magazine, mm -hmm. then we don't have to do anything about it. And he mm -hmm. looked at it. He was like, mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. this is embarrassing. Yeah. I'm like, see, 
So that's when it started. He was like, yeah, we have to do something. So I love we that. went right into doing the Black Mirror Project. I love how yeah. that started. And could you, like, for the people that don't know what the Black Mirror Project is, like, just explain exactly what you were doing. Yeah, so the Black Mirror Project is a photo project that we did. And we took brands that wasn't using black models at the time. They're, they're making effort now which is a positive thing. It's good. That's all we wanted. I'm making I mean, a face. <laughs> I mean, we didn't, we, it's like, I don't know any black girl that wants to like always be me, 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 me. We exactly. just wanted to be a part. We want to be seen. Seen. And just heard. represented. Period. Just like the girl next door or the girl sitting next to me. You know, period. we want to walk in a room where we feel like we belong there exactly. as well. Not like, oh, wow. And I think for uh, of many, um, obviously many clients, many many brands mm-hmm. in the industry, they, it's like they tease us with the opportunities, but then always close the door in our faces. Yeah, we that's how it feels when yeah. you're modeling as a black woman for 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 a long time. And yeah. Obviously, again, things are slowly changing, but for a very long time, it was just like, yeah, yeah, you're beautiful. Oh, we'd love to have you, but then they release you or they don't yeah. use you. And it's just like, Oh, they want to well, use you from up here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I'm just like, you're, you have the same yeah. look all over the place, yeah. but then will you refuse my black dollar? If I wanted to buy from your company? No, no, yeah. you'll take my black money. So then why would you and not want to put my black people face? buy more, more. So why would you not want to have me represented in your ad campaigns? Why would you not want me to be seen? Yeah. Why don't you want me to see myself? Yeah. So that's what the black. So the, going back to the Black Mirror project, we shot that campaign, and we took um, campaigns from famous brands and shot me side by side, mm-hmm. just to show the world, the society, the modern industry, the fashion industry, yes. the negativity. Yes. To put an X on that, just yes. to show how people show the fashion industry how their campaign would look yes. if they put a, a woman, woman of color. Or to give us an opportunity. Right. So that wasn't to mock anybody or right. say that um, black girls are more important than any, no. any other no. race. It wasn't to bring any brand down. It was just an education. Yes. It was like a voice. It was like a message to send out there and tell people, listen, we're tired. Yes. We seen it all. We just need to be heard. We just need to be represented. We just need to be seen. And this is how it's done. Amen. Like, she is beautiful. I get it. It was like supermodels, like right. like Gigi, Gigi Heidi, all that. All, yeah, I'm I'm even forgetting a lot of them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Ambrosia. Yes. Um, and I'm like, look at this. This is what we can do if you just give us this opportunity. And I'm telling you, girl, it went crazy. It went crazy. Yeah. I remember. I think that's when I first saw you on Instagram. Yeah. Um, before we finally met, like years later probably but I was like oh my god who's this beautiful girl and um I saw the picture one time and I was just like yo this is dope af because um here's this beautiful black woman side by side like same exact almost to the t uncanny resemblance to the the white model in the in the official campaign Mm -hmm. and you guys recreated it almost down to the t yeah and it was just like, wow, why can't you just put a black woman in those spaces? Yeah. We can do the same thing. If anything, some of the stuff looked elevated, if I may say, yeah. <laughs> with having <laughs> Didi in it. You feel <laughs> me? Yeah. And it's just like, so why? The, the it question was, it brought up for yeah. me was like, so then why? why? Why would you not? Are you Why are you guys still insisting in not putting us? And the answer is racism. Systemic yeah. racism. Yeah. It is buried exactly. in all different facets of the world, in, in all different in facets so many different of ways. every industry, yes. and in so many different ways. Yeah. To the point where we're not being we're not being given work. Yeah. Just yeah. because we're black yeah. as models. And we're not complaining. Yeah, exactly. At all. But I'm glad that you took that that direction to prove the point. Yeah. The thing is also people have to think about the mental health part coming yeah. from a medicine point of view. It's yeah. like, think about the mental health part. Like, okay, your daughter, your black daughter or your mixed daughter. Mm-hmm. How will you feel if someone keeps telling her you're different, but in a negative way? Mm-hmm. Like, 
you're not accepted. Mm-hmm. We can't. Someone looks like you. You can't sell. You're not pretty enough. Or your hips are bigger. Or you can only be a model for a certain time because black women blew up. Like, what is this? That's like, crazy. It's going to change a way a girl see herself. Completely. Mentally. Completely. That's how people go into depression. I mean, it really had a big, big bet on my life. Yeah. Like, I felt like that wasn't enough for the longest time. Yes. I felt like I have to compete. I felt like I have to do this rat race of chasing and working and working hard yes. and killing it and killing it. And kill. At a certain point, it gets so tiring. You know, it gets so frustrating that you have to consistently, as a black woman, prove yourself just because of your skin. And it, it like literally has such an effect on your mental health. And yeah. I'm glad you brought it up because we have such a um, stereotype that like we're strong black women yeah and we're not strong like we're not strong by choice does that make sense we have we're strong because we have to to be strong there's no choice like there's no option i mean what else do you want us to do we We have to be strong yeah we walk around being told we're black why do i need to be tom black i don't walk around telling you you're white else exactly i don't need to be told that i'm dark skin i know who i am thank you i woke up this morning when i looked in the mirror i saw thank you i'm i'm good i i see what i am that alone is mental illness and i was telling i was telling a past guest or friend of mine that like America is the only place that you come, or not just America, but anywhere besides Africa, in the Western, mostly white-dominated countries, is the only place where you feel and have to be confronted with your blackness every yeah. single day. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I don't know why this was such a surprise to a lot of people when I said, um, I didn't experience the racism that I experienced in America, in Africa. They're like, wait, what? But of course, because Africa's black people. I step out my house yeah. and it's black people. You look like me. We look like each other. What I'm about- not trying to put you down because you're lesser than. The only thing is, um, the only hierarchy that there is maybe is obviously um, rich and poor and yeah. like social and economic. Yeah. Um, but there are, there are missionaries that right. comes that are white. Right. I never one day, because I, I had a white friend missionary mm-hmm. that would come to our church. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever experienced yeah. that. I never one day like judge her for her skin. Yeah, exactly. I knew she was different. Right. But that, that for me was amazing that she's different. Thank you. Because I don't like everybody being the same. But you see, the world was perverted by white supremacy so much yeah. that the other way when it's the other way around Maybe. they look to us as lesser than because they've been told mm-hmm. by foolish so-called philosophers exactly. and whatever crazy scientists <laughs> that white is best and that that's just white supremacy white supremacy has done a great job around the world of Making perverting the, yeah. everyone's mind. Yeah, and then you see, but when white people do come to Africa, we're opening up our arms. Any when anybody comes to I don't, Africa, I don't we're think, up I don't our think arms. they feel as furtin as we feel mm. here. Mm. They look much more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Like if they walk into the room, I see a little bit of comfort versus when I walk in a room yeah. in America. Yeah, period. Like you don't think about it, but if you really think about it, it's like, oh man, that is actually true. Mm. Yeah. What is that about? You know, it's like a thing. I hope a little, ch- we still have a lot of work to do, but the Oof. changes is happening. People are speaking out more. Girls are discovering themselves in different ways and trying to get out of this little box that society have like provided for us for the longest time. Like you belong in here, you here. It's just like, it's mind blowing. Times but, are changing. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, yes. Jesus. Because, ooh, child, I am over it. And that's the thing, like you were saying before, um, I don't want to complain. And I don't want to continue to, for me personally, I don't want to continue to have these conversations about, you know, the things that are happening. And I don't want anyone to ever think, oh, we're we're putting ourselves as victims. Because I am Mm -hmm. not a victim. I am a victor, okay? Mm -hmm. Hashtag Mm -hmm. victory over circumstance. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not anyone's victim. Yeah. But for us to be able to express ourselves is not, it's not complaining. It's me speaking my truth. Yes. Simple. And if you don't want to hear it, 
then change this system and society so I don't have to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. And be a part of the change. Exactly. Be a true ally. Because anytime I speak out on my platform or like put a post, because I'm very, I'm very vocal, vocal about yeah. it and I will say how I feel because yeah. I am not going to hold my tongue I mean, you for anybody else. I experience it every day. I experience it every day and yeah. I'm not about to hold my tongue for anyone else to feel comfortable. If I'm feeling any kind of discomfort and I speak out about it, you gonna feel it too. You and also if have you to feel write. It, you feel me? And yeah. if you and if you feel it, then clearly something is wrong. Yeah. But don't ever tell me I'm because of course I'll get all those crazy trolls. Ah, you're why are you always trying to be a victim and da 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 da. Ain't nobody you just, a victim You just here. gotta love the internet trolls. You got to love them. <laughs> you got to love them. Let me tell you, if you're an influencer, or content creator, or whatever they call it. You just have to love it. You have to love it. Because you you're always going to get trolls. How do you deal with your trolls? Because I'm sure... Do you have any? Because I feel like you have such a great I have um, a platform very, and a great audience yeah. and community. To be honest, I'm so grateful. Like, all my my supporters. I love to call them my, my family. Yes. Um, I have such a strong community that took a long time. So not a lot of trolls, but I do get them, especially around... Every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. They don't come around anymore now that I'm engaged. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. Why? Well, before, um, it would be like, you know, it's so bad, girl. Even even our own people do oh, this course. to okay. me. Oh, of course. Okay. Would they have a problem with you being in, being a, in a relationship? Being in a relationship with her. Yes. They would have a problem. Oh, my God. He's white. And you're speaking about black. I'm like... Okay. okay, I am the freaking change. Girl, let's get into that, please. Because you are in an interracial relationship. Yeah. And um, obviously your partner before that was a, a, also a white. white man. Yeah. Okay, so like, what is that experience like? Because I can imagine trolls. I was in a very... <laughs> um, <laughs> Also, you know, publicized interracial relationship. Were with, you with um, Justin Kim? Yes, Is it the Korean? What? He's Korean. Yes, and oh. it was. I, I got a lot of support, but I also there were only a few trolls that would have something to say about yeah. it. That always, you know, oh, you think you're better because you're, and it's like, girl, no. <laughs> So He's how do man. you deal with it? Like, how has um, that been for you? Let me just let me just get this straight. My first boyfriend was Liberian. Mm -hmm. My second relationship for five years was uh, Guinean. So I have dated a black man. You love who you love. I love who I love. Okay, like, period. listen, you don't go on the street and you're like, white, no, black, pig, white, no. It's like connection. Yeah. It's love. I'm Good. going to fall in love with someone that treats me with respect, Amen. love, knows how to communicate with me. Mm -hmm. Sorry, lady. Someone that worships me because I will yes. worship him. Amen. Someone that loves me as much as he loves himself. If yes. you don't love Ooh. me, I don't care what color you are. I'm not going for you. Snaps. So I'm not going over there picking men because of the color. Mm -hmm. um, it was hard. At first, I, I would like hide my ex-boyfriend from social media mm -hmm. because I kind of felt like I didn't want my black community to do like, you know, talk crap to me. Mm -hmm. And then I got sick of it. Again, I'm telling you, I'm always the girl in the middle. Mm. I'm fighting for diversity, and then right. I'm getting attacked from the other side. For having a white man. Oh, having a white man. And I have a white audience that's saying, oh my God, you're talking too much about people not liking black, and I love you. And then I have the black audience saying, oh my God, you're supposed to be our black Jesus, and now you're dating the devil. Oh I'm like, oh, oh God. seriously, so I got that so many times. And I've been called coconut. <laughs> called oh my things. God! No, not coconut. <laughs> no, no, girl, the girl, coconut. I love now. I love the thing that I have such a good community, but it was just a mentorship. Of course. So I get it, and sometimes my fiance now would tell me, "Don't even read those messages now. Just block." Oh you my know. God. So how do I deal with it? Block and yoga block. and meditation. <laughs> block and delete. Block and delete. Boop boop. I'm just but deep. no, that is so interesting, and that's so real. First of all, I just wanted to touch on what you you had just said. Loves you need somebody that loves you as much as they love themselves. Yes. Boom. That ooh, that that's, was such a joke. That's, that's my thing. And hopefully, they love themselves a lot. Yes. So that they can love you to that level. Girl, I've been in a relationship where Listen. he didn't love himself. Ooh, and then how can they love you? you. Well, how do you deal with yourself being in a relationship with someone that don't love themselves? Exactly. That's like a lot of If they don't love drama. themselves, how can they love you? Yeah. Period. Mm, number yeah. one. Then number two, I'm just like, 
what? You can still fight for your people, your people, and fight for yourself as yeah. a black woman Spur and express your yeah. your pains and frustrations, and and also fight for you know more justice in different areas, and have and date whoever uh, you want to date. Yeah, and date whoever the heck you want to date. Yeah, what's like, wrong with that? What is the issue? Yeah. I mean, I can, I can, mm, I always try to understand like where people are coming from. Like, were they saying, like, oh, you're selling out? Because I know I have a girlfriend who's also dating a white man, and I, she gets that a lot. And it's like, well, why? I don't care. I don't care anymore. Why? why? That's that's the thing. I do not care. There we go. Let me tell you. You have to get to this place, though. You have to get to this yeah. place. And it took me a long time to not care. Yeah. Um, but even in the... Let's talk about this, because our black girls need to understand this. Even in the black community... I'm still not fully accepted and I still mm. don't care. Mm. Because if I walk in a room and I walk with my, my white husband mm. and you feel like you don't, you don't uh, uh, connect with me because I'm with a white man, mm. that's your problem. Mm. It's because you are not connected with yourself. That part. You don't understand yourself yet. And that I've part. been there at the point where I didn't understand myself. Mm. I've never been at the point where I judge another woman for who she dates because mm. that's her decision. Right. But if you are judging me for the person I'm dating, that has a lot to do with who you are. You and not me. And it comes with age. Like mm. the moment when you grow up, you realize that people problems that they try to make about you is yeah. not about you. It's about them. That's it. And there is this thing that started when this Black Life Matter was going on. Yeah. Like my fiance and I, we did we did so many uh, um, protests. We. Mm. I mean, I didn't put everything on social media, yeah. but he was like supportive. The it. fact that he's even with me mm -hmm. and we're together and we're mm -hmm. doing this together, we are the we are the change. Yes, amen. Exactly. We are the change. And why are you making someone feel so bad for being with who they love right. and protesting with that person? This guy wants to have babies with me and I want to have babies with him. And yes. his kid is going to be told she's different because she's dark. And he mm. doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. He's fighting from that from the heart. And if you can't understand that. it as a person, as a black woman, you can't understand what a struggle it is to be a black woman enough to beat another woman down for mm. dating someone else. Mm. That is the problem. How can we talk about, you know, advancement in the black community if we're beating. fighting each other and beating each other yeah. down? Yeah. You see your black sister dating someone she loves for the right, right reason. You you need to be lifting her right. up. And see, okay, so this is what I'll say about about that and, and about this your experience is at the end of the day, I think people have a problem with the intent. And I, that's mm -hmm. all that matters is the intent. If someone is dating outside of their race mm -hmm. because they love that person, amazing. Yeah. But I think people have a problem with when they're dating with other uh, dating people outside of their race mm -hmm. because they think it's better. Mm. Okay. So that's what it that's what it can be, but at the same time, it's because just the like, thing it makes them like icy. Because for a long time, yeah. for a long time, and it's this still for the light skin babies, you know exactly, <laughs> exactly. For so for a long time, black was always you know mm -hmm. told that we're we're this and we're that, and, and white is right, and and yeah. you know the lighter skin um, people were always getting. So I I remember when I was young, like. Uh, my friends would say, like, they want a white man so that they can have a light-skinned baby. Yeah, but how many of your friends actually end up with a white man? Oh, but see, the thing is, and, you know, we were younger, but yeah. to have that mentality, yeah. a lot, some people do grow up still sticking to that mentality. A lot of black men, too, with black mothers. Yeah. And that's the whole thing about athletes, right? They, they, they have a black girlfriend in high school, all that stuff. She's with you, shooting in the gym. And then the minute you make a million-dollar contract, Most you go stars. and... Uh, you so-called upgrade to a, a white girl with blonde hair. And I've had experiences here too, where um, I'm in LA, I'm with my girlfriends, we're, we're looking cute, we're looking beautiful, and we're around all these you know, different athletes or whatever, black athletes, and they were not checking for us, not one bit. They were yeah. not looking at us. They were looking at them white girls. They were looking at them Kim Kardashian looking girls and the that kind of look the, that kind of looks like a little bit like you but just whiter skin. Exactly. They got the <laughs> they got the, the fake ass. Off. They got the big boobs. Oh, it's okay. They got the big boobs. They got the big asses. But but it's just like 
Th- that's what I, you're I, on? I don't know what what's up with that. I've looked into that a it's, lot. It's a lot of self hate. There's a lot yeah. of self hate in our self hate in our community. So I think that's what a lot of people are seeing and mm. and speaking out against. But no, like I, I'm saying, I don't date for acceptance. You feel sorry. me? <laughs> Period. At the end of the day, yeah. if this person is choosing to love another person, yeah. My my only thing would be I would pray that it's genuine love and mm-hmm. not because of self hate. That's the only thing, and because that's it. Another thing is people have to understand what relationship is, especially when you're older. I'm not talking about when you're younger because mm-hmm. when you're younger, you do all sort of things, and you know back then our parents didn't really tell us a lot about relationship. But now that I'm older, I'm not dating someone because of what they have. Right. I'm dating them because that's the person I'm going to be with for the rest of my life, especially Amen. my husband. Amen. I'm going to live with this man. I'm going to see his good, his bad, his everything. And I need to be okay with that. Yes. I can't just date someone because I'm a, it's acceptable in right, society. Because right. I'm sleeping, waking up, living, person. traveling. Do you know what it means? Relationship is hard alone than carrying this thing where you have to date someone because there's a certain, con- there's a certain color. You're going to just hate that person. Or, or, yeah, you're dating someone to make someone else happy. Yeah. Even if it's your parents. You're not even going to be happy. So, no. So, that's... For me, I'm a Sagittarius. I date because I'm hopelessly romantic kind mm-hmm. of person. I want, like, the cuddle, you know, the feelings, the eye contact. And whoever gives you that. Yes. That's the person I will go to. And yeah. I will stay as long as I have it. I mean, we can work on it, but... <laughs> so I'll stay as long as I have it. As long Amen. as I have it. And... If it's like, whatever man, he's rich, he's poor, he's black, and he's white. If I have that connection with you, if we can communicate, mm-hmm. and if we're on the same page, our values align, mm-hmm. and we have goals we're working towards, and if you're a man, not a boy, mm. I'm there. That's it. I mean it for you. That's because it. women need to understand our entire life will always second. Yeah. And if you find a man that puts you first... That's the person you want to be with, not Period. the person that puts you second. You I know what I mean that. by second? Like someone's inside of you, so you're having a baby, mm. someone's got me outside of you. Right. Let's just be real. Wow. You know, yeah. your wife, you're second. Like yeah. Michelle Obama, she married mm. Barack. Mm. She's second, mm. even though she's first lady, but she stays second. Mm. So, well, no, nah, she's first. Michelle no. Obama is, is. Have you listened to her podcast? Yeah. She said yeah. it there. She was like, you always second as a woman mm. till you stop being second. Mm. Until you stop being, being second. second. So yeah. it's, it's also a mindset yeah. shift. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yes. Because yeah. she definitely does not carry herself as no yeah. second. She ain't Barack second. But society saw her but society, as society, yes. second. Society, yes. Society will. Because his husband and mm-hmm. his wife. Mm-hmm. You know? Society will, but. They push that you. mindset shift. Okay, memory card. That mindset shift is yeah. is everything, and yeah. that's that's all that matters. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. So no, no, oh no, no, no dating because you're cute. See, we're yeah. done with that. We're done. No, we're I'm, done. I'm, and I'm, the thing, I'm one, one thing I want to add to that before we move on is like, there are a lot of women who can who date for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and I guess if you're okay with that, then if you can live with that, then okay. But I personally could not live with myself if I was dating, dating dating someone only for the purpose of some kind of gain. Yeah. Like, it just has to be about love for me. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be if, about that. If yeah. other women, you know what I mean? If if another woman, you're comfortable with just being taken care of, mm-hmm. you're going to have the house and the car, and that's good enough for you. Yeah. Then you're fine. Okay. That's okay. That's, that's okay. Can, and can all... report back to us in like 10 years. Exactly. <laughs> if, if it takes that long. To me, that's not genuine happiness. But if that's for you, that's what it is. If you're happy in whatever in those circumstances, then good for you. But I personally just couldn't do it. Um, but yeah, I, I love your, your insight on that because I think that's something that I'm sure a lot of people wonder, especially if they're following you like how that how how you deal with being in an interracial relationship especially when you're so vocal about you know fighting for um to to be seen and represented in the industry um so with your journey you know what's so funny though uh i get questioned all the time of people that want to that people that are mad um, like a different race and if you're interested but they're afraid and they'll ask me um 
how is it like dating someone that is so different from you? Mm. To be honest, it's not that much of a it's difference. Not that much. What about, for me, my question would be like, are you having to teach him a lot about your, um, your, obviously, I feel like you have to, right? So I taught him about the hair. He's the only one that touched my and hair. And that doesn't annoy you, right? Because I know a no. lot of, I have girlfriends who, they don't want to date outside the culture for that reason. They're like, yeah. they don't want to explain every time. No, 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 no. Okay. Remember, I'm a learner, so mm. I love teaching people. Okay. I don't really teach. I feel like Michal came ready. Mm. For some reason, he came ready. Mm. So when a good thing we have the black, we had the Black Life Matter, mm. so I was able to educate him mm. along with my therapist. Mm. I, I had my therapist at the time. Mm. So I didn't teach him much, but whenever the question comes up about being black, mm -hmm he's open. Mm -hmm. And whenever the question come, comes up about him being white, he's open. Because there's a lot you can learn from him too. Of course. You know, like we there's- have to learn from each other. From too. each other. There are so many things about like the white culture and the black culture that both parties don't know about. Yeah. So we're open to teaching each other. That's one Good. of the most amazing thing. Good. And like, I'm not afraid of him touching my hair. Right. Obviously, right. If you're going to be staying with the person for the rest of your life. You have to be comfortable yes. with certain things. I do have things that he cannot talk about. Mm -hmm. But that's, like, when I say talk about, it's not anything big. Mm -hmm. But I'm comfortable with whatever. Okay. Because you know, I'm in it for it for, forever. I love it. So, I love but, it. And so this man that we're talking about <laughs> ended up proposing to oh you my God. <laughs> not that long ago. I mean, we, we might as well just touch on it. The relationship during COVID. Oh, my God. My quarantine baby. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How was that? I don't know if I would say he's my quarantine baby. We met in February last year, and we got proposed seven months later, wow. which was, like, super fast wow. um, for people. But here's the thing again about society right. putting time frame and people in box. Like, how many times do women have to wait for a man? Like, we have to wait to get married, proposed. We have to wait to be... For you to agree for us to have kids, we have to keep waiting and waiting. So I'm But like, then when you're single, why don't you have a man? Why don't you have a man? Yeah. And then when a man come, like, don't you think that was too soon? I'm just like, no. <laughs> do what's right for you, period. Exactly. Right? At the end of the day, do what's right for you. And this felt right for you guys. It felt very right. Like, I, I never it. met, like I was telling you, I never yeah. met someone that is just so similar. Yeah. To me, our second day, can you believe mm. what we're talking about on our second mm. day? How many kids we want to have? Yes, I love it. It's not normal for you yeah, to go on a second it. day. Right, second day you talk about. And you guys are talking about kids and family and houses and mm. big bagels But the, see, the, the older we get, the more that yeah. fluff. I'm, I don't care what your favorite color is. What's your credit score like? I don't even know what his favorite What color. do you want to do? Do you want to build? Where do you want to live? Where do you want to raise children? Where, yeah. How do you feel about, yeah. you know, this and that? Like, real yeah, stuff. you get, you get totally yeah. past the, the little things. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you just have to do what's right for you. Right. Exactly. I love it. And that's what we did. And yeah. And I feel like your, a lot, a lot of your life, literally as a influencer, you're a lifestyle influencer. Mm -hmm. So your life literally is on, your work. On social media. And yeah. your and it's on social media. Yeah. So it's like you do have to just be so personable and like just I'm very personal very open, yeah, with open. my audience. We do we do get our alone time many times. Yeah. We don't show. How do you balance all of that? But we have a we have a balance. Thanks. I have a uh, Miha is very good at that, uh, good at telling me to like get it together mm. he's not afraid he's mm. not afraid to put me in in my place and that's right i love that yes. because i need to be tall i need to put my phone away yes so we have this thing where we don't take technology in our bedroom okay we have this thing where if it was saturday we're off no phones mm. no technology no tv it's just us mm, and like it builds connection that way Good. when consistently just having your internet all the time we have little trips that we go on where we don't post on instagram maybe little clips in here from here and there but we we have a balance we're still figuring good. it out but i think it's pretty good right now that's and good Setting i never used boundaries. to have it yeah we have boundaries yeah. for sure good i feel like my past relationship made me I, maybe i never really like was very firm on it but okay. now again if you want to build something solid you yeah. have to be in it yeah so we do, and and also I don't really hide things from my audience. I put everything exactly. On that's media. what I'm like. How, how that balance? Like I also tell really them good. when I'm taking breaks. Mm -hmm, I say good. I'm taking like two weeks off or five days off. That's me spending time with my man. Right. 
I have a wedding to plan right. and sometimes I would disappear. Right. And again, oh as much as I love social media, I love my audience. I also don't owe anybody anything. That part. Yeah. Does it ever tire you, social media yeah. and all this stuff? Like It used to a lot. I, I literally was just saying how I feel like half of us in the industry are like, we'd be happy if it died tomorrow. But then it's like all of our work is on there, so it's we need it. Too. I don't want it to die. How do you feel? I'm gonna I mean, you, all my see, audience. you, yeah, you <laughs> I work love on it. there, so how I do love you feel? It. Um, so I do get tired. That's when I know I need to take a break. Mm -hmm. When I, I don't even let myself get tired anymore. Um, but I used to do this thing where I would just be like checking out other people's pages. Yeah. But listen, you can't do that all the time. Mm, so the I have health. time for everything. I have calendars. I have schedule. I'm very straight. That's why it's kind of hard for us to mm. meet. Um, my whole life right now is kind of like on a schedule, but in a very in a way that is is satis satisfying me. Good. So it doesn't tire me. Good. If you plan things up, if you plan things the right way, if you First of all, like every week, you know that I have my Sunday or my Saturday mm -hmm. for my self-care mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. So when I'm rested, I'm fine. I can go and go. Love it. So it doesn't really tire me. Okay. You know, for, because I have balance now. Uh, that's the key. You yeah. have to find that balance. And yeah. for those who are like looking up to you and really want to like maybe do what you're doing, mm -hmm. how do you set yourself up in that way as far as your schedule and like just get to where you are? So if you want to be an influencer, you have to sit down and really ask yourself that question. Like, why, why do you want to be an influencer? Because mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing. And another thing is the whole world thinks influencers should either stay in that lane or always speak up when it comes to politics and all the things. And influencers are your doctor, your yoga teacher. I'm not your doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm not a yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are the things you have to be very strong mm -hmm. to want to do. You have to know of, yourself. You have to know yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be in a good place. And you can, while you're doing it, you can figure out yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think if someone is very passionate, they're strong, they want to do it for the right reasons, spread the right messages, they should just get started. Mm -hmm. Like they have iPhones right now. Mm -hmm. I shoot started. a lot of my content on iPhone mm -hmm. and I have like cheaper camera. Mm -hmm. Just get started with a schedule, set time for everything. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have enough time for creativity where mm -hmm. you can think. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it gets so cluttered where you can really think a lot. I think it's a lot about scheduling, productiveness. Mm. You know? I have an issue with scheduling. Well, not issue, but like I want to be more like there, more scheduled. Because I mean, you my, have to tweet things in your life. Yeah, because I'm like, my whole life is scheduled. Yeah. Like working as a model, like you get handed your schedule and then yeah. I have to work around that schedule. Yeah. But then it's like, but you have to be able to like shift, move. Yeah. Like put it here, put it. Yeah. Because my life that people, a lot of people don't see is like Zoom calls. On the phone all the time, and I have briefing, talking to people about okay. Yes, mm. I have her. Whole, I have her. Uh, my management is a whole team, and talk to them. Mm. And I also have my girlfriends that I want to hang out with, and I have my fiance. So yeah. it's like a, it's <sighs> like a, it's a lot. lot adulting. <laughs> it's don't like a lot. don't do it. No, oh, I don't recommend. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Don't even get started with the wedding planning. And then I'm a, I'm my own wedding planner. Wow, you know why so. aren't you getting help? Because because I'm like. Are you a control I'm, freak? I'm a, I'm a Sagittarius. You're a control freak. No, not hundred percent. Uh, sort of kind of. I'm just the kind of girl where I don't want to sit back and like do that, do that, do gotcha. that. Gotcha. I want to be there. I'm like, oh, this Doing is what, it. Yes. Yeah. I want to be a part of every single thing. And I'm yeah. it's sorry, Michal. <laughs> he lets me do it, so it's fine. Good. I mean, I'm super driven and I'm also the girl that wakes up at 5 a.m. because I know I have to have everything on schedule. Yeah. But control freak. That's awesome. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a control freak. Am okay. I? You're just maybe you just like control. You're not a control freak. I love taking control. Okay, okay. That's fair. That's I don't good. love control. I love taking control and okay. being in charge and being responsible for my actions. Okay. You Ooh, know, yes. That's because, wrong woman talk right there. Because that's me. Yes. That's the thing. You can't control everybody else. Mm -hmm. You can't control what someone thinks you of you, what someone, you. But you can control this. Amen. I can control what I'm going to say right now. This moment, I have nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. You know. So I love to be in control yeah. of myself, and as much control 
I can have of things, the yeah. situation that I can control. Right. So I feel like the planning part, I can control that. It's, that's good. It's harder, but you have to be a crazy person like me too. No, that's really, really good. Like that's a great, great asset. Like that's something I'm working on myself to get yeah. better at. Just come hang out with me a day. Honestly, because that's all you can do is control yourself and yeah. how you're operating in this world. So if, you know, the least you can do is, is make sure you're getting your own shit done, right? If you want to scare an African mother, an influencer, just bring her over to your house. Like my mom was with me one day when yeah. I was like full on working. Yeah. My mom was like, oh, what is this life? Right. This is work. She mom. was like, what are you doing? Yeah. I was like, on the phone with this person, that person, Instagram. She was like, wait, wait. So when you post on Instagram, it's not just all pretty and no, cute. No, no. I'm like an influencer. See, mm, that's the misconception. a full time job. It's a job. Yes, you are, especially if you are the brand. Like, yes. if I'm working for a makeup brand, right. like, my pimples can be all over the place. Mm. My hormones, as a, as a woman, it even gets harder because mm. you, we have all these hormonal imbalances mm. and stuff. So it's like, it's a lot of work. Like, it's a job. It's and a that's, job. that's yeah. another thing. Like, people don't see the, like, the work that it takes to create content. Yeah. A lot of these women and men who are content creators are not, you're a yeah. creative director. You're yeah. a stylist. You yeah. are a set decorator. You yeah. are a photographer. You are a director. Yeah. You literally, and the cameraman, like you're, yeah. you're wearing all these hats. And I do everything on my own too. On your own to yeah. produce what's it called. Some people do have help. God yeah. bless them. But I respect the ladies who are like I, my girlfriend, Asiami. I'm just like, I, we met five years ago when she was also in nursing school, yeah. starting up. And I remember we were just talking about, uh, and I was also, you know, just starting with the modeling. modeling. Yeah. And we were just talking about how like, oh man, this is just so hard and this and this and this. And I'm just looking at her now. I'm just like mind blown because- Years of work. Years of work. Delegation. These people did not just- Pop, pop out up. of nowhere mm -hmm. like y'all do this this every is your single job <laughs> you feel me yeah and that's why you, you know you're we're, we're looking at you guys from the outside thinking oh it's it's easy or oh they're just posting pictures you try to do it yeah you try to do it it is not easy guys so mm -hmm. i really i respect it and i hope anyone that wants to do this um, Didi is a great resource. I mean, if you just watch her stories, where can we find you? First of um, all, where do you, what else do you have going on that would you like to plug? Um, I mean, I post everything on social media. <laughs> she posts everything. She's like, just, just go on my Instagram. <laughs> where can we find you? I'm on secrets of Didi. So it's like telling someone a secret OFDD. That's my Instagram handle and it has my blog and all the information about yes. me. There. Yeah. I love I'm it. I'm all over the place on Instagram. So I'm not just one kind of style. I do lifestyle. Right. So for all the healthy stuff, I'm trying to lose. I'm trying to lose 15 pounds right now. I'm down five pounds. Why? So if you want to learn more, girl, I gotta fit in a dress. But there's so many dresses that you'll fit in right now. You look, Excuse you look amazing. Me. <laughs> but hey, I feel you. I feel the you. The quarantine weight has okay, to go. Okay, yeah? I feel you. So I share all those little small things about life mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. I love it. So secret of Dee Dee. Are you on Twitter? Or anywhere else? I'm on Twitter, but I'm not active. Not active enough. Yeah. Okay. Facebook. So Instagram. Yeah. I feel like I'm more mostly on Instagram as well. Yeah. So definitely follow her on C at Secret of DD. She's amazing. I love her. And I mean, if you haven't fallen in love just talking to her, I don't know what so I don't sweet. know what I don't know about you. <laughs> but as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. Thank you, thank you for coming. Thanks, I girl. appreciate you. The conversation was so filling. And I mean, I can't wait to talk some more. Oh about my God, we should everything. next time we have like a topic. Yes. <laughs> well, your life was the topic. So yeah. thank you for talking about your life thank and you. being real with us about your journey. So I appreciate you so much. Thanks for having me. And thank you guys for listening and thank you for watching. If you're, if you're on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you want to hear, what you want to see, and I'll be able to provide it for you guys so much for listening.